guys, it's Emily. So it's Monday today and I'm going to try to start another reading vlog. I've been seeming to get back on track. I'm doing NaNoWriMo this month, which I'm currently 5,000 words behind on because I participated in the reading rush and then I didn't really write at all. So I need to get caught up this week with that. But I am also doing some reading. And I just finished Ride or Die, A Bad Boy Romance this morning in Choices just because I've decided I'm talking about Choices in these vlogs now. It's really was better than I expected. I was expecting a cheesy bad boy romance and essentially that is what it is. But going into it, I don't really like bad boys so I was not expecting to like this but I actually really adored this. I had a fun time playing it. I'm excited for the sequel. Overall, probably like a good four star. It was really fun and enjoyable and way better than I ever expected it could be. I have been reading The Silence Between Us uh, since yesterday. I'm currently on page 167, so I would like to complete this today just because I'm speeding through this. I'm really liking it. It's a really good contemporary. It's about this girl named Maya who's, a, who's deaf and she's going to a hearing school for the first time since she lost her hearing. Um, kind of figuring out like how to fit in and you know just like stuff like that it's really good highly recommend it right, Alison Gervis is the author of In 27 Days which is one of my favorite books of all time I loved In 27 Days and I wanted to pick up more of her books so this is like the first book since In 27 Days that she's published and then I am going to pick up an audiobook today is which is More Than Words Can Say by Karen Wintermeyer I read the first book during the reading rush so I would like to pick up the second book and then just finish off the series, be done with it. I'm hoping, what, from what I've been told, this one's better than the first one. And I'm just trying to hope that it is. This follows um, Aunt Evangeline's brother from the first book, Zach. And he's, I think he's moved to a known town and there's like a baker. And I think to save her business, they have like a marriage of convenience situation. So that's what that's about. So hopefully it actually lives up and it's not crappy <laughs> or like there's there's probably gonna be some girl plot line that shows up i'll let you know i'm just i'm hoping for the best for this i'm really hoping it's gonna be great guys so i'm a little over halfway into more than words can say Oof. <laughs> i feel like it's almost about equal with uh the first book i don't know what i told you about it but it's a marriage of convenience situation basically our I've like read, ha I'm like more, a little bit more than halfway through it currently. I've just, that's all I've been reading today is this book. Um, but this book's about a girl named Abigail and she, there's like a new law, a bylaw in her town, I guess, that women can't own businesses. Uh, so she has two options. She can either sell her property or get like a... She can, like, get someone else, I guess, to co-own it with her. She doesn't want to do either of those things. She decides she's getting a husband. So she marries Zach, who is the brother from the first book in the series. Who I quite liked. I think he, I didn't really, like, have, like, a big impression of him. But I did kind of like him, I guess. She comes up to him and she, like, asks, like, if they can get married. And they decide to do that just to, for convenient situations. How do I feel about this? This is one of probably my least... I, I quite like the marriage of convenience trope. It's one of my favorite tropes in books, maybe because I've, I've seen it done well in one of her other books, so I thought I would still like it in this one, but I feel like I'm not liking it as much. So if you have any marriage of convenience recommendations, I feel like I'm very specific when it comes to this trope. Um, I like it done in a sweeter, slow burn kind of way. Basically, I've had a couple issues, but at the same time, I also feel like I'm too young to understand, and I don't know. But some things just rubbed me the wrong way. I will say, I feel like this is the most, uh, steamy of Karen Woodmeyer's books. And Sharp Star Bride, I feel like they actually, like, could mutter the word sex. I feel like there's something, like, sex is a no-go word. They can't say it. They're like, physical relations or relations with you. It's like, they can't say the word sex. It's a bad word. I don't know. I think there's some things I just don't necessarily have issues with, but there's also those things that I just don't like. That just says some things that rubbed me the wrong way. I kind of wish, <laughs> not gonna lie, I kind of wish the romance was between uh, him and the main character's sister. 
they come up with the arrangement, he basically says he wants to have physical relations with her because he can't say the sex word. He's kind of like, I'd like to get to know you first. And he's like, okay. Um, just, he's like, I just, like, I'll let you, like, you can say no whenever you want. I'm not going to make you do something you don't want to do. But it is also kind of hinted at that they're, I don't know. So disappointed once again. But I was hoping maybe I would like this one. But I don't know. I think I'm just not liking Karen Omar books anymore. I don't know if it's just because I've read them. Like, I once you read one, one you've read them all, basically. I felt like I could always like enjoy one of her books like I mean it hasn't been as great since Short Straw Bride but there's quite a lot that I quite enjoy and I loved all of those but I'm not loving her new stuff so and I tried I think reading Taylor Made Bride a few years ago and I didn't really enjoy that either it was okay I tried A Worthy Pursuit as well and I put it down and I don't think I'm gonna like it either so I mean I, I'm gonna still try to give her books a chance I'm gonna try to read all like all of her backlist and see what I think but I don't know. It's not been great. The marriage thing, he's like, the priest is like, oh, you have to obey your husband, which is fine. I'm not saying that's, that's a bad thing. But he kind of was like, oh, you're supposed to obey your husband because of the vows. So, like, I want a good night kiss every night. Which, I mean, I get, it's not asking a lot, but I think the way it was done just made me feel weird. I'm going to continue reading this book. I'm going to finish this book. But I think it's still gonna get three stars just like the first book did. I also picked up, as I talk, I am talking about choices in these vlogs now. I picked up Hero today. I am on played like the first five chapters today. I'm gonna go play the sixth chapter soon here. Um, but so far, I'm liking it. So far, I think it's a really fun superhero story. I'm sad we're like never gonna get the sequel. I started reading this when it first came out, but like I wasn't interested enough. I don't know why. Um, so I never finished it. But... I think it's a good story. I haven't filmed much place else, but I really didn't just felt like moving my camera anywhere else. Also, the hair, I just didn't want it down. I don't know why. I was, I was in a weird mood. So, I've been reading more of... More than words can say. I haven't really picked up my physical books, which is... Silence Between Us, which I'm liking. I don't know why I'm not picking it up. <laughs> I don't like this book. <laughs> I've been adamant on Goodreads, ranting at every chance I get. Let me remember everything I freaking said. I'm, I'm even more disappointed with this book than I feel like I was with the last book I read. I've kind of just, this is not what I look for in a marriage of convenience story. Also the characters legit can't say the word sex, I think I mentioned that, but like it's such a scandal. They're like, get into bed with him, and I'm like that sounds more scandalous than saying the word sex, but it's like, it's like a no say word, like why can't these children legit say the word sex? I don't know what's so wrong with that. The boyfriend not the boyfriend but the love interest character he's he's like planning to you know spend some quality time with his wife right to you know get to know her and you know have some romantic times together right which i mean is all innocent in itself but he he instead of like you know saying like let's go on a date or something like that like normal people do he's like i'm going to abduct you tomorrow i'm like that's not romantic <laughs> even when he like went to go take her out on the date he, the date, abducting her, he, like, kind of pretended to abduct her. This is not appealing to me. I just, there's nothing romantic about this. This is trash. This book's trash. I hate it. <laughs> the relationship is physical. It's physical. They say something like, oh, I'm in love with this person. Like, I think Abigail said she's, she loves, um, Zach, right? And I don't understand... They don't! They don't know anything about one another! Like, I swear! Like, and then all of a sudden they were, like, opening up to each other and stuff, too. But, like, it's it's purely physical. I don't think- I don't know the characters well. Like, I couldn't tell you, like, what they do in certain situations. I don't feel like I know these characters, just like the characters don't know one another. I feel like this book is just, like, was trying to push to the end and, like, people like kissing, so they did that. I just, I don't think this book is doing a good job at what it's trying to do, and it's trying to, you're trying to convince me that these two characters are in love, and I just don't see it, and if you can't convince me that these characters love one another, well then what's the love story? There isn't one. I don't believe that they love each other. I don't think they know each other well enough, even though they've been married for like 
a month or two now. Like, I feel like they should know one another. But, like, it's, like, only talking about the physical stuff. And even, like, when... I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but, like, even when, uh, like, Abigail was having some hard time or something like that, and she was, like, all... What was me, I guess? I don't know. She's kind of like, oh, Rosalind's prettier and stuff like that, like her sister. Um, and then, like, then he's like, no, like, I, I like you for you. But then, like, literally just talked about her physical appearance. And I'm like, why not talk about, you know, like her, um, like her, the inside. Like, what really matters. Like, her personality. Like, I feel like he doesn't know her and I feel like she doesn't know him. And then there was this weird subplot that turned into a plot twist that did not need to be a thing. <laughs> She's like... He's take he's abducting her, right? And he's taking her along this path and she it's from her perspective at this point and she's all like freaked out. She's like, No, we're going down the path with the death oak tree. I'm like, what are you what? There was this plot twist, so I I will go into spoilers right here, so I'm just gonna I'll put a timestamp on the screen or in the description, probably in the description, to let you know at what point I have stopped talking about this into spoilers, or I'll just give a spoiler warning on the screen. So uh, while I guess, yeah, while the spoiler warning is on the screen, I am talking about spoilers. I apologize, but like, I, I feel like this is too spoilery. But basically, she like killed Sophie. Sophie's like another character in the book who like they were friends and then they weren't friends. Um, but it seemed like Abigail didn't know why they weren't friends and it just seemed like she stopped liking her at some point. And that's all I see it was, that's all it should have been, to be honest. But no, there's a reason behind it. And it's because Abigail killed Sophie's beau, her boyfriend, I don't know. Like, it was on accident, like, she fell out of a tree. I don't know how she got up on the tree in the first place, to be honest, or why she was in the tree. They fell out of the tree together and then he died. So, like, she didn't technically, like, kill him, but still. Um, this plot came out of nowhere. I feel like Abigail should have been, like, you know, gripping with this or, like, you know, felt guilt every time she looked at Sophie or something like that and never got any of those vibes. It just simply, like, the only f possible foreshadowing we ever got of this was the fact that, um her i guess sophie was like didn't like her but like even with like that's not gonna make you assume that and i get that but at the same time like i feel like it wasn't like written well to like me looking back and be like oh that's what she's been hiding all this time oh that makes sense because she wasn't hiding anything was part of the problem where i feel like with zach maybe because we knew him from the first book and we knew like his big secret we like heard him in his head and be like oh no like what if she found out my secret or something like that like with zach i feel like we knew that there was something he was hiding from abigail even and i know what he was hiding but like abigail didn't know it but like i feel like with abigail we never knew that she was hiding anything from zach and then you find out that she is hiding something from zach and has a legit panic attack at seeing a tree and he was he was kid kissed her so like he doesn't have to explain his issues oof that's been my main complaint i read listened to some more and it's it's okay i'm not there's something about Rosalind becoming like this queen and then they're like oh we voted on it and she has to do it and like she doesn't have to do anything and he's like oh well, like we already voted on it so like some mayor dude, I don't know who, he's just like trying to make her sister, uh, Abigail's sister be this queen thing for some parade float, whatever. That's my thoughts on that. Alright, so it's Wednesday and I have finished More Than Words Can Say by Carol Miller. I'm gonna give it two stars. I was so disappointed by this. I think even more than I was for More Than Meets the Eye, which says a lot, I feel like this book was trash. <laughs> I did not like this book. I don't think I've ever been so disappointed by a Carol Meyer book. And I thought that was the same about More Than Meets the Eye. But I found this one just much more problematic than I guess Logan was. I don't know. I didn't like a lot of the things Zach said. Again, I didn't really find him similar and worthy. I could see why people would, but I personally don't. I think same with More Than Meets the Eye. This has high ratings on Goodreads. So, I mean, if you are interested in this series, definitely check it out. Um, even though it wasn't personally for me. I don't know what it is about the guys in these books, even the girls in them. I liked, um, I think the one positive I will say about this book is I really liked the sister relationship between, um, Rosalind, Rosalind, something, something like my bad, and Abigail. I really liked their relationship and just how they're sisters and stuff and supportive of each other. I really like that. So I think what I would love to see, you know, more in Carolina Meyer books is like a strong sister relationship because I feel like we've seen like a lot of like strong brotherly relationships. Um, I'd love to see more sister relationships, so I might see if I can find some more. I'm still gonna read Karen one of my books, like, this hasn't changed, even though I strongly dislike the series. I'm de definitely gonna pick up the 
Archer Brothers series again and see if my opinions have changed of it. I'm curious. I really hope not. Oh, I love that series. I've only read the first book though and I've always wanted to read the second book because it's about Crockett who is like one of my favorite characters in the series. He was just great and sweet and like fun loving so I th it's fun to see him as a love interest but like I just hope that I won't be disappointed because I feel like every time I pick up a Karen Wimmer I'm just so disappointed and I don't know if it's because my reading tastes have changed or that I'm just more noticeable about like problematic elements when I see them um overall there actually wasn't a big action ending like I was expecting usually there's some like big ending in Karen Winmeyer books that like if first of all you're not expecting at all when you first read Karen Winmeyer but like then it's kind of usual you see it like there's like I don't know like this out of nowhere historical you know I don't know action stuff which is kind of I don't know how to describe it but this one did not have that it kind of um was resolving things with like the mayor and like his wife and there's some a like I don't say action but you know like dramatic stuff happened I, I kind of preferred that to be honest even though I wasn't crazy about this book in general and then like these kids show up out of nowhere and you know they're involved in this thing that happened I mean it's nice but I feel like the kids kind of came in too close to the end of the book there wasn't really a girl that she came to help besides I guess the two kids at the end of the book and that was more Zach Zach was the more the one who was like let's help these pe kids out like they need money and food and stuff like that. There's some positives I feel like to say about this book but the rest of my opinions are pretty negative. The whole uh there was this weird they she described it as a platonic hug in public. I'm like just because y'all are hugging in public and stuff doesn't make it platonic. <laughs> like platonic means like y'all are just friends and like husband and wife can hug in public and it just, like, it's just between husband and wife. Like, why does it need the word platonic in front of it? I don't know. We also had this random plot line. Like, I understand where it came from, but it was very short-lasted. It was like they were trying to pile all these, like, random plot lines into, like, the last little bit of the book. And it was, like, just a little too late for that. Um, Zach was thinking about going back to gambling to help Abigail get some money to repurchase the stove. And he's going to gamble for it so like in the middle of the night he's practicing cards and then she catches him and she's like you're not no you're not doing this i'm sorry but no and then he's like okay i guess i'm not overall i did not like this book there is a novella about rosalind and i'm interested in reading it just because i really liked her character i haven't given a book to given a book two stars since like my goodreads experiment so this is a lot so now moving on to other books um i'm going to pick up would like to me by who's it by um Rachel Winters so I currently have this book out I started it like a couple weeks ago um but I never I got like 10% into it but I never continued on with it but this book is about this girl who's like I think she, wa she wants to be a screenwriter but she's currently like an assistant for this company and this guy who like won I don't know Oscar or something I don't know he won an Oscar for his movie um he was set to write a rom-com but he has just now decided that he's not going to write this rom-com because he doesn't believe in love and or like in love in the sense I guess that like how it happens in a rom-com he doesn't believe in that he thinks it's all like fake and you know um and if uh Evie our main character doesn't get him to agree to write this movie she had like their company is going to go down under um, and he already signed a contract already saying he would write it and now he's like kind of like nope and then he would have to give all the money back that they paid him for so she um strikes up a deal with him that like he has to start writing if she can like prove that like you can fall in love the way like you meet in the rom-coms and stuff like that she goes on this quest to like spill coffee on guys and stuff like that i guess so i'm on chapter four or five um i'm liking this book so far like i don't have like a strong opinion on it so far i'm only like 10 11 percent into it and um i do s the one comment i can really give you so far is i like the fact that like every chapter kind of starts with the way like a screenplay is written it'll be like interior evie's apartment day kind of thing like that like and then it'll like, give like a little setting description of evie's like how to place her hands on the counter and she looks agitated or something like that i'm liking that so far i think that aspect's super fun other than that i am excited to get more into it i'm curious if like i'm pretty sure she's gonna fall in love with somebody um I'm curious if it's going to be like the guy who doesn't believe in love and is writing the movie which is what I was expecting but um I don't know for sure 
or if it's going to be like some person guy she meets trying to do a meet cute rom-com thing with so i'm excited to see where that's gonna go so it's like five o'clock now um i've done some reading i think we're up for like an hour of the silence between us and i'm loving this book my dog went in what? my dog came to say hi so i guess we're vlogging with him but have read more of the silence between us i love this book so much it's making me so happy i don't think i told you what page i'm on i for like an hour um i'm on page 224 currently i think i stopped at a good spot I'm curious to see what's going to happen next. I love this story so much. I think it's so well told. Um, I think it does such a good job at telling the story. Um, I think it do really does a good job at really getting inside the characters' heads, like, <laughs> or the main characters' heads. Um, I, I think I told mentioned this. The main character is deaf, um, and she's going to a hearing school, and so like she signs stuff, and like I can kind of picture like the signs that they're making because like I know like. You out, but don't come back. Why don't you back in? I got interrupted like five times, but to get back to where I was talking about this book, you can kind of she like lip reads and stuff like that, and then she also knows sign language. Sign language is her first language, so whenever she signs, you get like the full front of that, but it's like written in a way that people sign, which I think is super cool. I also find cool like when she's lip reading, you don't get to hear the full sentence sometimes, or majority of the time, you don't hear the full sentence. You kind of just have to fill in the blanks for the most part and it's pretty easy to fill in the blanks of what they're saying and like what she missed with the lip reading that's a personal thing i feel like i can't really judge that aspect of the book so i would highly suggest going to check out other people's review of this book um people who are specifically part of that community um the love story is adorable i love it so much there is they're just like this cute scene she's at the hospital and she's doesn't have an interpreter and their like VRI system which I actually first of all didn't even know was a thing that the hospitals had this VRI system where they can get like live interpretations or something from this TV hadn't or I don't know live but like it's just cool how that works I never knew that was actually a thing uh, that their system wasn't working and then she called Bo in to come and interpret for her and like he stayed there all night and it was so cute um, and then he asked her on a date and it was also so cute. <laughs> he just like ran, I think Jackson was trying to ask her out and he was, she was like not, it was kind of confusing. And then Bo comes in and starts interpreting and he's like, go out with me. I'm like, wait, what? And I was trying to understand what's happening. I'm like, oh, he's asking her out. Oh my goodness. This is cute. I was smiling. The date was adorable. Seeing them together makes me smile. I love seeing them together they're so cute they make me so happy overall i'm really liking this book it's really good i highly recommend this book so as i do allison's girl's other books i'm definitely gonna, i'm obviously gonna check out whatever she writes there's some stuff on wattpad that i haven't read by her that she's written specifically a sequel to in 20 some days that i never read would like to pick up more from her when she comes out with more i know she only has two published books right now but like whenever she comes out with more i will read everything she writes it's amazing and i love her books so Hey guys, gonna keep this update pretty quick and short. I haven't read anything within the past two days. It's Friday night. Um, I don't plan on reading anything tonight. Um, I kind of had somewhat hectic today. I don't know. Not hectic, but I don't know how to describe it. I feel like I can't say I'm busy because realistically I'm not. Right now I'm kind of tired, so I'm gonna like, go like watch Disney Plus because I really feel like doing. Um, and I... I guess the one, two things I did read was the new chapter of Distant Shores and The Royal Heir. Um, Royal Heir was cute and fun, but also making me angry because of Isabella and Bradshaw. Um, they're just really annoying people. And then Distant Shores was fun, as per usual. I love this pirate book. It's turning out a lot better than I expected. It's such a fun story. I'm really enjoying it. I think it's just really well told. I love pirates. Um, I love Edward. <laughs> I'm excited to see. There's like supposed to be another love interest, like Oliver. He's like a lieutenant or something like that. I think he's on like another ship. Um, I'm excited to meet him because we haven't met him yet, and I really want to meet him. I also love Maggie. I think she's great. Um, she's so fun, and I don't know. I love Maggie. Maggie's great. So I'm going to try to make this as quick as I possibly can, but. 
I didn't end up reading any more throughout the next couple of days, that's why I haven't updated you guys in so long. It's Tuesday now. Um, so I need to end the reading vlog. I was supposed to end it yesterday, but I didn't feel like it. So we're ending it today, but I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. If you did, give it a like. It was kind of a mess. I didn't really read a lot because I'm kind of slowly getting back into it. Because of Corona has thrown off my reading game. But I really, and I, well it's actually not even specifically Corona. Actually it's been distractions. I have been so addicted to webkins. Like, I don't know if you guys remember this game, but like, it was like this, it's been on about for like 15 years now. So if you don't know what it is, where have you been? But it's like this, like you like have like a pet that you like adopt, it's usually like a stuffed animal. And then you can like type in a code and you can take care of it and you can like have like multiple. I have multiple and there's so many different things you can do in webkins world. So I've been getting right back into that and like making houses and rooms and stuff like that, but it's been addicting, so, but, anyways, enough of that. Um, the only book I read this week was More Than Words Can Say, that's the only book I ended up finishing, I didn't end up finishing The Silence Between Us, I'm going to do that soon because I'm loving that book, so, we'll do that, but, gave this two stars, I didn't like it, I'm not gonna go into any more thought my thoughts, I'm sure you've heard about it enough already, but, that's all for now, and I'll see you guys soon in another reading vlog. Goodbye! Yeah.